Well then, things were a bit interesting today. We uh, went into the cave where we were attacked by a bunch of the Gricks, underdark creatures with tentacles and beaks that nearly ripped us to shreds. Luckily I was able to survive, but I wasn't looking none too pretty for the fight. And it looked like for a moment during the battle that uh, Julius was about to be killed, but some fortune seemed to stop the assault and altered the attack, missing him completely. After the fight, we were able to kill off the last of the creatures and found a passage to the Underdark, which, uh, after some deliberation, we gathered together and decided to, you know, get the miners and have them seal up the cave behind us sort of thing. We went back to the dwarves to get our reward, and there we got our money and decided that we might have enough to go trying to free Wilk uh, Helcrum, but... We'll see if that's available or not. At the moment, though, we decided it might not hurt to get a little more cash. So in the, we decided to go uh, get a job to go get some herbs from the area that they could use for he help for the people. And Apparently there's uh, owl bears there. We may or may not have to face them down. We'll see if it's necessary. But at the moment, that's all we can do. I don't think there was much else we missed. <laughs> nope, not really. Uh, it was a concise session. <laughs> it was. So, uh, gathering your supplies and heading in the direction in which the barber told you, uh, you all begin once again to venture outside the borders of the town of Teleburg in hopes of finding blood. Heading this way, passing not too far from the mines, you notice that the forest is a bit more tightly packed around this section. Um, the trees are a bit closer together. It's a bit harder to move through, but as was told, it would only take the two days, I would leave. Um, we we worked it out. I can't remember the exact number. It's going to be, you're going to come back with a day to spare. Barely. That's what we worked yeah, out. We, we, had a, like, we had a day to spare if we did this. Yep. Uh, so, as you all begin the trek, while you are moving slower, that's been accounted for. Uh, you still will arrive at the same amount time left. It's just, yeah, it takes a bit longer to travel through this part of the wood. Okay. Heading your way through, it is dense forestry. Few creatures of size larger than simple rabbits, birds of prey, seen. Continue forward. Um, is there anything the party would like to do during these days of travel? Uh, Kessix very eagerly keeping an eye out for Albers. Fair enough. Got to just cough and comments. Did we leave Julius behind? <laughs> I mean, I can play him. Fair I'll, enough. I'll play him instead of Sickle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess Moonstone would, uh, go up to Grotus. And he'll say, Hey, uh, I have a question for you. Uh, yeah, Moonstone, what is it? Do you need anything? Uh, pardon? <laughs> Do you need anything? Well, I mean... I've been asking people if they need any equipment made. Or anything like that. Oh, I see what you mean. Grotus will kind of look at his, kind of rub his stubble. Like, probably okay, honestly. Can't think anything necessary for me to have at the moment. But, uh, yeah. I appreciate the asking. Cool. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be necessary. There's other things you can get, but. Uh, what about you, um. What about you, um. Kessix, uh. Anything? I believe you're already helping me out with something we've discussed. That's true. Uh, yeah, if you ever go on any other outies any moment, I can take a look into it. I'll be sure not to be shy about it. Oh, please, I enjoy it. And what about you, uh, Julius? Not uh, Julius, uh... Xavier. Uh, brain. That one, thank you. <laughs> brain just not work for a moment. Uh, uh, Xavier, you need anything? 
He kind of was uh, absentmindedly whistling to himself, but kind of uh, upon hearing his name, um, he kind of hits a bit of a sour note as he kind of looks over and says, hmm? uh, Oh, uh, actually not quite, but uh, thanks for asking. Uh, he kind of looks around at the lot of um, everyone. It's just, say you. Uh, oh, actually, nah, I suppose. Well, what's got you in the given mood? It's what I do as a profession. He kind of nods as if he hadn't quite thought about that yet before, kind of. Huh. Well, um, I can't quite think of nothing quiet. I mean, I ain't no inventor or whatever, but, uh, I guess I'll let you know if I ever think of something. Sure. You turn it up, I could probably build it. He, um... A bit of a bright smile kind of appears on his face as he kind of just, uh... companionably smacks your back, and it's just... <laughs> Thanks, oh, Moonstone. Uh, yeah, sure. <clears throat> and he just kind of stretches a little bit as he kind of looks on forward, uh... still kind of inside of the wooded area. It's just... Alright, so... And then kind of checks over towards Kessex. You, uh... Looking mighty excited there. What's, uh... What's going on? I... <laughs> I'm always in... In the mood for a challenge. It's, uh... Exciting. I've never seen an owlbear, but there's been text about them. They're supposedly a... A nice... It's a uh, fuck. What's the word I'm trying to think of? Sorry. Monstrosity. <laughs> yeah, it's a monstrosity. It's a um, real son of a, a bitch. A, a, a rare, but I'm just gonna say rare because I can't think of the word. Um, Uncommon. Unique. unique. Thank you. It was unique. A uh, unique monstrosity. Yeah, I mean, uh, monstrosities to begin with are kind of kind of not used to them entirely i mean owl i've heard of owls cute kind of weird looking motherfuckers and uh well bears see plenty of them but uh mixture of both of them well huh actually chris uh what do i do i know anything about owl bears by chance they have the uh, body of an owl and the head of a bear <laughs> <laughs> um, Hope to get a bit more out. you can roll a uh, history check. Sure. I'll have Grotus take a whack attitude due to his adventuring. Sure. I don't mind. Sure. Um, as far as you're aware, Moonstone, owlbears are not a natural creature, but one that... Just in the world. Uh, very much acting like that of either, well, more of its bear-like uh, ancestor. Um, they are omnivores. They can often be found in heavy wooded areas uh, or sometimes mildly mountainous terrain. Uh, Grotus, you would know this as well. Um, you would know that there are tales and legends that, yeah, owl bears are not something that are were naturally created nor naturally formed, um, while not all monstrosities, while many monstrosities are just natural creatures that aren't qualified as beasts, um, owlbears are often thought to be the product of disturbing research. Um, though <laughs> evidence to that is heavily lacking. Um, you would also know that they are known for their heavy amounts of aggression to anything that's not an owlbear. You would know that if an owl bear thinks it can win the fight, it'll probably fight. And the only way to dissuade an owl bear to do so, once it's noticed you, is to show it that it won't win the fight. Well, they're a bit more aggressive than the average beast. As far as I'm aware, there's some sort of a messed up magical experiment, some sort of wizard or something decided to get an owl and a bear mixed together for whatever fucking reason they could think of. Don't know why, but... They're uh, aggressive. I same suppose reason that so. Resulted in, same reason that resulted in manticores and hydra for whatever I know. Actually, what? those are natural beasts. Uh, 
he kind of like <laughs> opens his mouth, closes it, and just takes a really hard blink. <laughs> I'll think about that later. But uh, Cassex will go on talking about how and the stories he's read, they can grow up to 20 feet tall on their haunches. They've got claws like short swords and made of fine elven steel and just just a lot of uh, not... Uh, <laughs> a lot of child accurate. nursery rhyme yeah, tales. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and Grotus kind of looks at you, Blake, and uh, I don't think they quite get that big, but they are vicious. They tend to only... They'll, they'll attack if they think they can win, and the only way to try to not get them to attack is to make sure they know they can't win sort of thing. Hmm. Well, I mean, that ain't too rare as far as nature goes. I mean, any and all beasts, they are capable of fighting, but they prefer not to, unless it's for a purpose. Hey, we're just... Huh. Yeah, we're just dealing with a right freaking an animal. Hmm? I said, we're just dealing with a right freaking an animal. Yeah, I mean... Well, m monster, but... Or whatever, I guess that means, to be honest. Uh, well... Yeah, no, um... I mean, as long as it ain't immune to fire and whatnot, I don't suppose we would have a problem. Or at least my case. Uh, they're not immune to any sort of uh, magic as I'm aware of. Uh, quick question. They're, they're, they're no more... Are they more intelligent than the average bear kind of thing? Or are we, are we still dealing with dum-dums? With Grotas and all it's, that? They're, they're animalistic. Bear. Yeah. They're... Yeah, they're very much... It's not going to talk. It's not going to... Yeah, I'm aware. Heavy reason. It's gonna be if you're in the territory, you're getting the feather kind of thing. They're still very <laughs> bestial. Yeah. Yes. They would fall for the dead rabbit trick. <laughs> Probably yes. And so would a medicor, apparently. <laughs> well, those so, that was yeah. yeah. We had to use a live rabbit because we were pretty sure it was smarter than that. Yeah, the oh, dead okay. rabbit would have failed. The live rabbit would have uh, was what we needed because it that's less suspicious uh, than just the dead rabbit. <laughs> Well, I can. Well, here, okay. I'm gonna be honest with you. When you said dead rabbit, my thought process was, yeah, it's dead because we were about to sacrifice it to a fucking manicure. Yeah, <laughs> it was a dead rabbit walking. <laughs> well, in any case, uh, do we like either? If we go in there, get the herbs, and leave, it might be easiest. If the bear Alvarez gets us trouble, we'll have to take care of him. I mean, at the end of the day, we could always get a nice Albert pal. I heard those fetch water for us. No, the, uh, I hate to sound like a stickler here, but my rules and code are very strict, unless it's causing harm. But, well, if the stories I've been told are true, it, it, it should be an issue. I mean, I mean, to be fair, it's not like they go out hunting people or anything. It's like a bear, right? You stay out of their territory, they generally leave you alone. And I ain't too sure about how monster hunters do it, but, I mean, chances are you... Hunt for actual game and whatnot as well. I mean, gotta eat somehow. Not typically our place, no. Um, mm. We we buy and rely. Uh, my organization buy and rely on donations for the most part, or used to. Oh. <laughs> Apparently, Zaku's minds. <laughs> Aye, that's true, but uh, things will be going. To be fair, I was thinking I got my times mixed up today, too, and I thought the game was an hour later than it was. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, totally. I'm completely calling the kettle black by my uh, terrible time management as well. But uh... Am I the only one here who actually like is punctual for anything? To be fair, I usually am. I just running so many games that start at four that I forgot this one was at three. <laughs> I hear apparently everybody's brain is wired a little bit differently when it comes to punctuality. It starts young and then it continues on. My my mother okay. is the worst when it comes to punctuality. So I think I adopted like the opposite. Like she'd always be fifteen minutes late, so I'm always fifteen minutes early. Yeah, must from what I understand it's wiring, but continuing on. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the game. Uh, well, in any case, uh, we'll move in, grab the herbs, get out. I mean, combat necessary, that's fine. I just don't think we should be looking for trouble. The owl pelt <laughs> myself or something, but I doubt we'll get more than a few coins for it. Yeah, definitely. And, uh... Well, yeah, but... Uh, hmm. 
How many? Do you know Grown if they, the they travel in by the way. Oh, yeah. Uh, calling it a pelt is probably wrong. Uh, an owlbear does not have fur, it's all feathers. No, oh, yeah. By the way, it's all feathers, so it's less of a pelt and more of a... down? <laughs> he says, scratches. Okay. Owl better pillows? I don't know, what the hell would you do with an owl pillow? I was about to say, think of the pillows you could make. <laughs> there you go, Chris, Moonstone. What kind of pillows could, yeah, I was about to, I was about to <laughs> say, what kind of pillows can I make with an owl bear? Well, an owl bear pillow. Owl bear Xavier pillows. looks legitimately <laughs> very excited all of a sudden. <laughs> Oh, Gordon, have you just... ever slept on an owlbear pillow? I haven't. In any yeah, case, it. I mean, if we kill it, I don't mind. I mean, honestly, I could uh, owlbear is fairly decent meat if you cook it right. It's a bit like a turducken in a way, since you know it's better <sighs> with mixed with uh, owl meat. So you know, it's got an interesting flavor. <laughs> turducken. Oh, you, you know, Alter Duckin, the ancient dwarvish fish. <laughs> <laughs> they like me that much. Great. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, if it was any race, right? <laughs> yeah, probably is the dwarves. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I that just reminds me. I have a video I had to show you guys. It makes me want to play a dwarf again. I just like just go to his father. It's not him a lie, but also Turducken. <laughs> Son, I'm about to teach you the ancient dwar dwarven art of turducken. <laughs> well, turducken is... Grotus is a cook, he knows his crazy foods. <laughs> oh my fucking god. Uh... <laughs> We're idiots. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, god. I, I gotta find it... the video for you guys. It's an interesting flavor since it's a bit like a bird, but at the same time a bit like a bear or so. Okay, so I think we're all in agreement when we say we're going to try to avoid a fight with an owl bear, but we're also giving ourselves reasons to fight these owl bears. Basically, if it comes to a fight, we have no problems killing the motherfucker, but let's not go hunting them. <laughs> is the agreement I, mean, that, I think we're coming what, down? That's what Moonstone said, and that's what Moonstone's saying. And he's just like he's saying it because he thinks it's funny. Yeah. Kessix <laughs> <laughs> well, is like not looking for tracks then. Grotus you will wanna... assist since I'm proficient with survival. Sure thing. You guys have already kind of are getting closer to it as you were told. Uh, for the sake of it, both of you make a survival check or one of you an advantage. The choice is yours. Uh, what's your uh, survival? Ahead, no, My, okay. I only get advantage if I'm hunting fiends or fays. So. Okay, well, oh, I'll it, do mine. Probably... <laughs> well, it depends. What's your actual normal survival? Because usually I know it was Grotus and Xavier. Yeah, because uh, we're both proficient. I have a two. Yeah, we got oh, three, yeah, so we'll should. we'll do it. Uh, yeah. So you'll assist me then, Xavier, and I'll just roll with advantage. Let's get it. Seventeen. Not bad. Seventeen, isn't it? Yeah, seventeen. Yep. That's what I said. Oh, I thought you said fourteen. I was like, why do you have <laughs> disadvantage? Okay. Anyway. Uh. So. As you get closer and closer to the destination described to you back in Teleburg, you do start to notice that the trees in the area start to thin. Um, as the forest is getting a bit more maneuverable and able for a large creature, there are still some tight kind of passes between the trees. And from these tight passes, you are able to see Grotus, just signs of larger creatures, probably standing at their height of around maybe five, six feet, um, that have moved through and essentially have just kind of like either pushed through, either pushing against trees, through bushes, that kind of thing, very much not trying to hide what they're going, like where they're going. Um, they're not exactly the hardest thing to track in this kind of environment. Well, we know where they are, so as long as we uh, just head for the roots, we should be good to go. Well, at least their bear counterparts are still just as loud as far as keeping their tracks going. Well, obviously, how many things you think would mess with a thing that size? <laughs> yeah, but you... slowly raise his hand. <laughs> <laughs> he actually just kind of snorts at that a little before. It's just, hey, Grotus, um, you think? Because at least Mac and Kelligan, um... Often what happened, of course, is um, stray wild animals would just kind of end up wandering a little bit too close to the area, and I would scare them off. Um, 
think they might react that way to fire as well, or I don't know. Would he I know? I think if... that they probably wouldn't want their feathers singed. Would he uh, know would that it... owl bears have an instinctual fear of fire, like average beasts, or is that their monstrosity make them not so scared? They're. You got a sense if it's like a raging forest fire? Yeah, they'd be afraid of it. Like they do have some like self-preservation. But if it's very much like I've got a, a torch, person, <laughs> yeah, they're not going to be afraid. They're they are not timid creatures. Uh, okay. Probably um, not. Not the most timid of creatures. If anything, with, probably get that attention. <laughs> with Xavier's spark, it's a maybe. Yeah. But like with anything like smaller than like a person being on fire, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> you do that trick where you light yourself on fire. It might scare them off with a bit of intimidation work. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. It scares me off in a way. <laughs> but uh. Yeah, all right, all right. Oh, on the other I'll side, save that for if it, things get bad, at least. Gross kind of strikes. On the other side, too, if we think that we can scare them off, maybe I can just go big and scare them off that way. Rather terrifying to a lot of creatures when I double my size. <laughs> yeah, true, but, um, well, maybe that will work with maybe one or so, but uh, if there's a lot of them, well, then you kind of turn into a big meal at it. At least, I guess. <laughs> Do owl bears travel in packs, or are they more solitary, like one or two? Um, the twenty-three, like you know that they are—they often hold monogamous relationships. Oh, hmm. uh, sweet lovebirds! <laughs> sure, Love bears. bears. <laughs> um, so usually it's a pair of uh, two, and then sometimes there can be three or four, depending on young. Um, owl bears usually stay with their parents until they are a bit past full size. Um, Has the mating season already passed? Uh, no, you guys are in spring right now. Like, you guys would have just came out of winter. Yeah, so in other words, so, either these things are full grown or one of the baby, one of the, the uh, actually that gets up an interesting point, Grotus rubs his chin. Actually, considering the time of year, it's possible one of them's pregnant, which would probably mean they'd be less likely to engage in combat. But yeah, if they built their nest right over the roots, though, that might be more, that might make more vicious. Aye, if they got their cubs with them, that would be a place where we'd battle, we'd have to force them out. Yeah, which I could do, though I ain't too sure about burning no owlbear nest. Okay. Although... Uh, uh, do, do they well, have caves or nests? Like, have we talked? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you were about um, to ask. That. Like, have nests or most of the times it would be a cave, but it's not unprecedented that they would use something else. Usually they're in uh, caves, honestly, but they have occasionally middle burrows or something. Well, hmm. uh, well, in that case, it might be possible that we could probably sneak in, steal the herbs and uh bigger to bounce probably honestly easiest what do you think there uh gallo <laughs> he um have been kind of spacing out <laughs> through this conversation <laughs> but he's been catching most of it <laughs> cough cough <laughs> smack self um and he his arms crossed he had been following they were using the horses right or were they walking by foot they're walking by foot because the horses can't fit. Okay, yeah. Cool. Oh yeah, the dense also, trees. Just letting you know, it. the entire conversation so far has mostly been about owl bears. Okay. Uh, then yeah, he would have tuned out. <laughs> um, okay. He's his arms are crossed. He's been looking around, uh, keeping an eye out for any sign of life that may actually be nearby. Oh, by the way, Chris, you said this was going to take a a day or two before we got there, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to switch off the goggles of night vision and turn back on the bow. Go for it. Sweet. Uh, oh, here you go, mate. By the way, but, uh, I've been asking everyone, do you need any equipment made? Anything in particular you want? That's a no for now, then. Uh, but he notices his, his bow on his back, the little sheen of the, the little inscription or whatever it's called. Um, enchantment and gives an approving nod but to answer Grota's question it's hard to say until we see the location itself but 
know, as we usually do. Uh, stealthing versus decoys versus distractions, whatever it may be. Exactly, um, you said these are roots. How much work does it take to actually pull those things out? Would that be something I would know? Um, roll a nature check. I mean, it's not really a big deal. But <laughs> oh, yeah, Could I here. also uh, do nature? Just to... Oh, never mind. Um, you would know Bloodroot, uh, I believe the tailor had asked for. You would be willing to pay for up to 200 golds worth. Um, you would know that about 200 golds worth of Bloodroot, uh, which is a very kind of almost vegetable-like red-colored root, um, is probably around... Uh, a bit less than 20 pounds. Of okay. so, so it's like a big thing, or is it like we're... Are we hunting for ginger, or... It's gin. It's, it's like, it's a bit larger than ginger, yes. That's a that's a great example. Okay, cool. Um, so just get a shit ton of it. All right, yeah. So, Alright. Uh, Moonstem will relay that information, and then he will say, Honestly, if we can grab as much as possible... Uh, it could sell elsewhere, or I could try doing something with it. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. And kind of smacks Grotus on the back. Right? Oh, probably not. We should be able to dig it up fairly quick. Uh, honestly, though, the longer we're there, the more likely we fight the ba the owl bears. But as I said, I'm not concerned about being able to defeat them. I'm just... It's not necessary to fight if we don't need to, honestly. Oh, well, I should mention, um... I'm more of a fisherman than a farmer, but, uh... Uh, are we trying to pull these things out with force or finesse? We're trying not to interact with them at all, unless we oh. have to fight. No, not no, the no, bears. No, the the uh, blood roots. roots. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Do they have I was to be gonna... large stocks? I mean, I'm imagining they don't have if, they're, to be... if they're ginger, it's a force thing. You just tear them out. <laughs> yeah. It's very, like, regardless of the condition they're in, so long as you're not destroying it, they'll be useful. Um... With a 20, you would know Moonstone. Um, Bloodroot kind of does grow and often kind of like small sprigs, usually about kind of at largest the size of your hand. Um, you would know it requires uh, its <laughs> namesake to grow. Um, blood spilled on fresh soil is often thought to eventually lead to Bloodroot. Um, I forget where I was going with this. Oh, that's right. The guy mentioned that there was a battle there a very long time ago. Yeah, about 30 years ago or so. A small squabble between rival kings. It's something where it might not be a bad idea to kind of soften the dirt up then and then pull it out, like hatching it up with an axe or something and then pull. <clears throat> yeah, definitely not. And it's Bloodroot isn't something you have to worry about damaging to a degree. Um, until it's mixed with a liquid, it kind of will like almost always keep its properties, unless you burn it. So Is like it a potato? potato. <laughs> Nope. Like I said, it's all ginger. Okay. Yeah. So ginger. you're and you're only looking for about like for what the tailor or for the what the I keep saying tailor. Uh for what the barber requested. It's probably about like I said, twenty pounds, maybe a bit more. I mean let I mean grab all of it if we can, but Yeah, well, exactly. We'll 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 spend the day gathering it and then head back. Alright. Alright, so I think we're all set. Let's head out. So, mm -hmm. I think we've got our plan. We find the root. We'll uh, have the diggers dig, and we'll have Gallo <coughs> scout out for the bears in case they come near us. Which I can help with all of that. Um, though it depends. You'll want some more strength when it comes to actually pulling them out. If they're going to be at least difficult, or at least I can maybe boost uh, Gallo's abilities. I don't think it's going to be that hard to pull them out. It's just going to be a little time-consuming. Uh, I... Good to do. Could I what? Continue. Oh no, I'm just saying, I think our best course of action is just to go in, try to get the herbs without disturbing the owl bears, and leave. I wish Julius right. was here to, to repent this. Besides, me and Julius can probably pull him up very quick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if anything... You said that these tracks aren't very hard to find. 
Oh, nah. Not at all. Alright, you just give me a general idea of where these tracks are, and I can figure from there. True. You sure you don't want to... Um... And he kind of... He kind of uh, wiggles his fingers around, and that white, same white-hot heat kind of dances about before fading away. His eyes will flicker down uh, to the lights just for a moment, and then back up at him. When we get there, if you can figure out the numbers, that'd be great. Because the more that there are, <coughs> the more likely I'm going to need it. Right, right. Okay. Hmm. Well, if that's the case, uh, kind of scratches his head for a moment. Pretty sure one thing about owl bears or bears, but I'm sure that their counterparts would probably haven't, is that uh, generally speaking, they all kind of are. While same, they kind of move distinctly. They all like to make their marks. So, surely, I think we might be able to find it. Right? Kind of looks over towards Grotus. Well, probably, yeah. As I said, we'll the big thing is when we get there is just to keep an eye out they don't come up on us while we're busy. Unless they're right there, then we just take care of it. Alright, alright. <coughs> well, we keep talking about the bear half, but what about the owl? Because those things can be just as dangerous. Wait, what? Wait. <laughs> uh, the only, the the only part they have from the owl is the hoot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you kidding me? Do you know how terrifying them little critters are? No. I... There's some beautiful predators. But... No, no. Okay, so, I don't know if y'all know this, right? But their feathers, they're, like, made differently. They're actually, like... Like, hear me out. They can fly completely silently. Case in oh. point. Well, yeah, they're a nighttime predator being quiet is kind of important for them. No, 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 look. Like, like other nighttime predators, like, er, well... Other things like yeah, they they can be quiet, but specifically with them, they are like. I, I why guess do I don't you really know that? Huh? <laughs> I just why do you know that? It's just such a random thing for you. Bird watching. It, in any case, stops, <laughs> thinks about it for a second. It's like, I guess that checks out. Yeah. <laughs> in any case, our bears aren't birds. They they got feathers, fine, but they don't they don't fly or anything. And they also sure weigh tons. Make more you sure that won't make them more silent though? No, that I just we're overthinking this. Let's just go. <laughs> this just starts marching off in the direction of the fucking plate. Uh... Just nods in agreement. It's like yeah, like, the owl. <laughs> This is flabbergasted by the comment. <laughs> Xavier kind of like shrugs, looking at them, and like looks towards Gallo, and then he just begins to like basically like just like very quietly move in a very aerodynamic way, and it's just uh, mouths what seems to be hoot hoot at him as he continues moving on. <laughs> Wait, at Gallo? Yes. <laughs> He's I. Here. Is that, is that in a mocking way, or is he just being a dumbass? <laughs> yes. <laughs> in that case, he will go over to him, lift up his leg, and kick him in the back. More like a shove, no. but still. <laughs> he falls <laughs> over. <laughs> Walks right past him. <laughs> He's just, oh, ow! Fuck! Little did you guys know, the owl bear has the flyby ability. <laughs> 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 he just kind of wipes off just like the little bit before realizing what he may have actually fallen into and he's just go and he just starts running after him he smirks <laughs> so I'm just wondering what the hell he's gotten himself into he's adorable and you love him <laughs> <laughs> well Grotus and Moon are on the fa same page again it's been a while <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, so it just looks like Rose is like, you know what? What you said earlier? Water on the bridge. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Never call me that again, though. I will not be happy. D don't worry, I, uh, I won't. I, uh, was in a... Out of sorts, and I do apologize. <sighs> Listen, I understand I'm not always the uh, most... <laughs> 
Uh, easy to be around. Yeah, he well, really isn't. <laughs> look at Gallo. Turn back to Grotus. Kind of push him forward a little bit so we can get back to our conversation. <laughs> when Moonstone looks back, just winks. <sighs> and <Anyway, laughs> the distance pouting, there is steam coming out of his ears lightly. Anyway, <laughs> listen. You may not always agree with my methods, but I do have a logic behind them. I'm not, I'm not some greenhorn running in blind. Gross kind of looks at Moonstone, kind of lets, kind of like, not exasperate side, but just kind of like, in understanding side, goes, fair enough, I suppose being around the others, and he looks back at Julius and Xavier, I sometimes forget the, you know, the others know what you're doing as well. Yeah, listen, listen, it's been, admittedly, it sounds like you've been at this longer than I have, but it sounds like I also handle different situations than you've been in. When it comes to getting in places and getting information, that's usually my area of expertise. Just have a look at Fair enough, I'll be more sure to... Let you take a lead for it, then. I, uh, as I said, wasn't in the best mind frame when things went down, and I do apologize. And I mean it. Uh, you're not the bad sort, and what I said was a little un was uncalled for. All right. All right. Sounds like we're good. Hey, I got this. When we get back to town, I appreciate you apologi apologizing, so when we get back to town, why don't I start working on a set of armor for you that you can sleep in? Hmm. It's not a bad idea. But honestly, he kind of looks at the middle. When we get back to town, too, I wouldn't mind starting to forge my own. Get a bit of an upgrade from this, and he kind of, like, chinks his chain mail. <laughs> eh. Could see it. If you got time, can you work on uh, what I'll give you? Sure, I could probably take a peek at that as well once we get to a forge. Alright, sounds good. Listen, I think you and I could make a really good team here. Yeah, I think there's definitely potential for us to work together in our right areas. It was a good talk. Gives him a pat on the shoulder. Yeah, I mean... Pat's your... You, Patch yours back in return. <laughs> so, as we move on, uh, do we see any things that indicate numbers, as uh, Gallo had requested? Uh, with that 17 minute survival, that would have been to ascertain it. Um, fortunately, you know there's more than one. <laughs> uh, but other than that, you're not sure. Then I guess uh, Xavier would just kind of let uh, let go. Oh no! After his little moment of uh, haphazardly uh, removing <laughs> things from his face, um, eventually he's just like, um, "Well, giving them nail marks and oh, those are different size feathers. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, um, definitely. There's more than one. And they're both adults. Uh." Can I surmise that from the length of some of the nail marks? I would assume uh, that smaller. You can assume smaller. It's, they're definitely large. Okay. Yeah, it's just uh, either there ain't much dimorphism or Moonstone is a little word? surprised that you know what that word means. <laughs> his his knowledge is varied. He has approximate knowledge of some <laughs> things. <laughs> Like, Moonstone doesn't, like, go, what the fuck? He just go he just goes a little, huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just continues on as if he didn't even fucking notice, which he didn't. Um, and just kind of goes on as just like, but, um, yeah, no, they're they're just big. Like, damn, I wonder how big their cubs are. Might be the size of, like, a wolf. And Moonstone goes, okay, now things back to normal. <laughs> <laughs> like, look at this, like, confusion and somewhat impressed, and then he's like, there it is. Okay. There it is. <laughs> the simulation. No the simulation has uh, stopped glitching. Um, 
uh, a little nod at that, and uh, I guess he'd keep an eye um, at the kind of markings and other signs that uh, Xavier had been given out for. So, like, the different marks, uh, certain kind of footprints. I guess along the way, he just asked them, is there anything else I should keep an eye out for? Claw marks. And else, um... Others. Well, other than the occasion that uh, everything I know was wrong and that these motherfuckers really can fly, uh, I don't think so, necessarily. I mean, They can't fly, don't worry, you're good. I'm just saying, I've seen quite a few really interesting things as of late. It wouldn't be outside of the realm of possibilities, all I'm saying. That... <laughs> I've messed shocking. with owl bears before, they can't fly, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying, all right? I didn't think that there could be beasts with tails and wings and then he, sort of human faces. Wings. And then a beast with multiple heads. It's I'm losing my head thinking about their heads. But a anyway. Actually, I figured out how they uh, fire, fire the uh, pins out of the tails. It's actually quite interesting. And Moonstone will start going into nerd speak. <laughs> Tunes out and uh, starts looking for signs. And uh, I guess how far are they now? Um, you get a sense that you're probably getting pretty close. <laughs> that we're near the blood root spot. Off. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> how how near is near? I guess uh, if, if anything, Gallo is It's literally as near as you guys want to be. It's okay. just if you're still talking or not. Remember the spell lasts for an hour. Spell? We haven't ah, cast the spell ability. yet. I know, I'm just saying. It's yeah. just I don't know if that was what uh Zaka was asking that oh. for. Oh no. Um I mean, he would start to scout about if if they know that they're close. Um and since we know that there is more than one, <coughs> then yeah, I guess he'll uh we'll look at Xavier. Given their sizes sound the same, well, there's more than one. Um, yeah. It it's just, um, yeah, they're kind of rowdy, but from what I understand, that's only whenever they're dealing with territory. Uh, traversing, uh, I don't think they're quite as um, uh, rambunctious. So if they were to see me, uh, Aside you from running, is you buy yourself. I can do. Ah. Uh, oh wait, yeah, ain't that a thing? Um, I, I don't suppose their feathery counterparts would stop the fact that bears can be fucking speedy if they need to, right? Uh, well, uh, if you made probably. the choke bef check before, you'd know that a bear is for quite often faster than a person. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, yeah, I got something for you. I got something for you, mate. And it tosses you a flask. He catches it, takes a look at it, gives it a sniff, but closes the cap again. And it kind of uh, smells like a fruit punch. Right. Eyebrows raise a little bit, but nods. It'll make and... you faster for about an hour. Yeah. Um, other, other than that, I mean, you're a pretty, uh, um, what do you even call it? Uh, I'm sure you could find a means to distract him, if you absolutely had to. So, distraction, no intimidation, no... Well, I mean, it, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like what Grota said, like, um, if, uh... You kinda, in order to get them to not want to fight you, you have to make them know that they ain't gonna win, so intimidation actually wouldn't be entirely bad, but... Yeah, I guess we are trying to chase off a battle all together, so... Yeah, you probably would want to do that. Does well, yelling at them work? Or is that no. Just agitate them? Uh, they'll have to be more threatening than just yelling. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, I know at least bears, you know, you want to make them yourself seem bigger than them, but then there's kind of like owls, whereas that don't well, really work. They kind of well, see that actually, as a challenge as to what they can fit inside of their damn gullets. Well, actually, with bears, it depends on what species of bear you're looking at. Black bears you can do that with, brown bears, that's going to get you fucking killed. Uh, I always heard they came in different colors, but I didn't think that was actually a... Huh. Did they you... poop? 
Yeah. Do they, do they do the 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 vomit thing? The vomit thing? You mean pouch? Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, I don't bear as poop. <laughs> like, but do they do the the vomit thing where they throw up the the carcasses? Oh, uh, probably not. Considering their size, they don't really have a need to. Shame. I uh. uh just as a goblin so, ball. What it <laughs> sounds like is way. I should run. Got it. Yeah. By the way, Moonstone looks over at uh, Jill, uh, Damn, I can't... Xavier and it just says, By the way, if you ever saw a panda, I would better blow your mind. A panda? It, pan it, ben, is that it, a bear? It, it's a bear. Yeah, it's a bear. It's but, but, hold, hold on. It's a bear, <laughs> but it's black and white. With It's white with black splotches. And... It only eats a plant called bamboo. Wait, I thought there was wait, actually not black exactly. and white, not just completely white. Like I've heard of that one, uh, probably in like the colder regions. No, no, it's black and white, and it just eats plants. Huh? That's well, actually that's not a hundred percent accurate. Kind of a misconception. They <laughs> well, they mostly okay. They mostly eat plants. Where are y'all seeing these from? Uh, well, I guess... Yeah, I mean, technically, right in this world, there's only a single fucking place where those things ever exist, and they are literally on the other side of the world, so... <laughs> I've heard legends and tales of the rare panda bear. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... As for... Jeez, I was about to say something. Fuck. Um... When it I think comes gonna to... ask for enhancement. Hmm? Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, no, he was gonna kind of bring this up. It's just, so wait, so you're gonna be trying to run away, right? Run away, be stealthy, keep my eyes open. Okay, cause, um, I, I so, right, I can boost a lot of things, right? Mm -hmm. But, um, another thing I can actually do is, um, uh, just a quick example. Um, he goes ahead and makes, uh, kind of glow again. Uh, but and this is purely for the sake of flavor. Um, kind of applying it to himself, he simply touches his face before rubbing downwards. And uh, before the lot of you all, you would begin to see what seems to be heat distortions. That I mean, he has quite a few blemishes, scratches alongside of his skin. He still has a unchecked mark of dirt that is still inside of his hair that he hadn't picked out yet. But before that, the heat distortions, as they interact with light, they make them all of a sudden disappear. He looks fairer of skin, lighter, and overall uh, more appealing, that being said. Any and all uh, quote-unquote unappealing parts of him suddenly just gone. Uh, as, yeah, he just kind of goes for I could potentially actually make it work a little bit more than what you'd think. Well, it is a staring thing. But then his eyes flicker up a moment. You missed a spot. Oh. Oh. Uh. He points ah, up damn it. his hairline. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, rubs off half of it in the other component. That's more right. biological burns right, off. Yeah, there was... Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so, I, I mean, I could always do that. I mean, it'd probably make you uh, definitely a bit more uh, intimidating, depending on what you want. But if the goal's running away, well, let's just hope you spot it first, and yeah, that being said, of course. Just saying, well, but, um... I already have something to help me run, but I need something to make sure that I spot them first before they spot me. And I don't have it, you shall. As he goes ahead and literally goes through the entire rounds of popping all of his knuckles before that same heat kind of goes again, and he just touches right underneath both of your uh, both of your eyes, and you feel that same um, familiar warmth fill the areas, and in a way, um, suddenly you feel as though you can see a lot better in comparison to before. Thank you. Closes his eyes as he hoops right under them and takes a short sigh as the heat runs through and blinks a couple times. Sees that his suddenly his vision is 2020. <laughs> right. Heat distortions, my dude. But, uh, but yeah, 
But yeah, um, again, um, do be careful about that afterwards. Uh, probably want to apply some like water to a cloth and then onto your eyes. It can kind of cause dry eye and whatnot. But I mean, that's at least your worries. Owlbears are your worries. Yeah. I'll figure it out. And he um, looks to the rest of the group. You know my signal now that I have that thing back. So. Um, but. Oh, there is now an owlbear inside my gold room! But, uh. Even though I'm keeping an eye. Uh. Don't keep your guards down. I'm back, by the way. Of course, of course. Ne never well, do keep our guard down. We'll be okay, so. Just take care yeah, of yourself uh, while we grab the roots and. Or, like I say, if there's anything trouble, get the signal off and we'll make sure we're ready for it. Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, just to keep note for the DM, uh, mm -hmm. as I'm doing my perception checks, along with keeping, like, I don't know if these are like separate checks and stuff, but along with keeping uh, an eye out generally for the sleeping creatures that may try to attack us, um, if I could keep a general eye out for uh, if there's any more blood root in the area, like if there are bigger bunches of them, but more specifically if I know where their den is. Okay. Walking around. So, uh, I guess. So, you guys um, want to, you guys do want to end your role playing and approach now where the blood root is? Yeah. 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 Okay. So, <laughs> that that is, apparently, it is called Owl's Wisdom, so this is fine. Oh, <laughs> as you continue through the forest, watching its trees slowly get thinner and thinner, eventually you come to what looks like it may have once been a clearing. Every tree you see now planted here is fresher, maybe a thick, a thick, a thick at, at its widest, a, a foot at its widest, at its thickest. Fuck. <laughs> um, yeah. Each tree, maybe a foot at its thickest. Um, and the more perceptive of you, those with a twelve or up on your passive perception, can just barely see littered amongst the roots and grass beneath what looks to be scrap metal armor shield, blades, weapons heavily rusted and scattered amongst the dirt and overgrown plant life. You imagine this is what you're looking for. Can... There's currently no sign of the owl. Can I just look through all the any like armor or weapons we can find, see if there's anything like salvageable or sellable? Sure. Roll an investigation check. Can I help? Uh, I don't know if that was necessary, damn. I'll say, do you have proficiency in investigation? I do. I'll say sure. Kazix, if you want to take the time to kind of try to look through this stuff, because there's like, you guys are in probably like an acre of land kind of thing. Like, it's not a small area. For my perspective, this isn't fresh stuff. This is all old. This is all from a battle that you were told was 30 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Um... Yeah, so you can take the time uh, if you want to kind of look through and see if you can find anything. Uh, you can. I would do that, yeah. All right. I guess while he does uh, that, the rest of us will gather the blood root while those two go hunting. Yeah. Um, oh, we're both going hunting? Well, no, no, because uh, uh, Moonstone was assisting, so he has to be there with Kessex. Oh, okay. So, okay. Um, okay. And while they're doing that, Gallo is going to start walking the perimeter. I guess he's going to be stealthing and perceiving, looking for signs of life where the dead might possibly be and stuff. And okay. So elsewhere, but yeah. So just to give me, um, just to give me an idea, <laughs> okay. uh. You want to have... So it's going to be Kessix and Moonstone are looking for salvage, essentially. Yep. Uh, Grotus and Gallo are looking for the blood root. Just Gallo. Uh, Gallo's just, not looking for no, blood root. I mean, Gallo's, Gallo's looking, looking out for, for the, the bears. bears. Yeah. Okay, sure and then Grotus... Yeah, he... Grotus is keeping, yeah. keeping, uh, keeping the watch, while the, the other three, being me, Julius, and Xavier, are gathering the blood root. 
Yeah. Okay. Gallo is yeah. That, that he's, way the bear, just around. so the bears don't sneak up on us. We have Gallo yeah, walking no, I get out you. so the bears don't sneak I, up I, on I us. I get you. I just wanted to make sure, just so I wasn't uh, just because I wasn't one hundred percent. Yeah. Um. So, uh, looking through, and so for those of you searching for blood root, uh, you will need to make a nature check. Oh no! <laughs> Not survival, eh? Damn. <laughs> No, survival is a lot of animal products and things like that for taking like a root vegetable out of the ground and looking well, for it. I'm luckily, Grotus nature. isn't terrible. Ignore mine. I didn't mean to. Imagine it. what he's doing. Grotus, right? Is. Nature. Yep. Uh -huh, uh -huh. This is just identifying <laughs> what's like what's an actual blood good. root, what's trees roots, what's other plant life, um, and pulling what you can, and then Gallo. You're going to be keeping an eye out for the bears. Roll me a perception check. And did you give him the owl's wisdom yet already? Oh, that's right. I was giving an enhance. So it'd be uh, an advantage. advantage. Sure thing. So 17. Uh, so, Grotus, Xavier, and Julius, to a minor extent, uh, as the three of you kind of start perusing, Julius probably complains for about something. Not sure what. Um, Dirt in his fingernails? Maybe. Just digging through his blood root? <laughs> um, his gloves are ruined. Once he, oh, finds out that it's actually, once he finds out that it's actually connected to blood, it's over. <laughs> As you kind of look through, um, you do start to see, you know, amongst the scrap metal, amongst the, amongst the pieces of armor and weaponry, there are Clear corpses, skeletons, um, many of them crushed, broken, no longer in one piece. And Grotus, you start to notice, especially amongst kind of the now crevices, uh, amongst the bones, you see a kind of this almost dark burgundy colored root, um, which Moonstone knows is what's Moonstone doing during this? He's assisting oh, right. Essex with assisting. the search. Yes, 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 yes. Right. I just want to find Chinese. Um. <laughs> You are able to kind of see this, like, dark, like, burgundy-colored root that is growing, like, amongst holes in the skull, amongst kind of openings and rib cages of many fallen soldiers. You start to find what is blood root. It's not the hardest to pull up. Blood root doesn't dig espe especially deep and without, without the, uh, gr without new blood being added to it, its roots don't grow too far. But you kind of slowly start to find just small little bits, a handful here, you know, sprig here. Uh, most of the blood root you kind of start to identify is noticeable by the fact that they usually have these very small, almost white-colored flowers that kind of just break the grass line. Um, uh, Gallo. Yeah. Oh dear. Uh, keeping an eye and watching out. I imagine you go a decent bit ways from the party, trying yeah, to... And, um, I guess maybe stealth him, too. Yeah, of course. Roll your own stealth check. 23. Very nice. Uh, need to roll... Yeah, to roll with advantage. Okay. Uh... Gallo, as you kind of move through, getting a decent distance away from them, um, you do hear and just barely see one kind of through the tree line. It's large form looming through, like that of the coloration and head type of a great horned owl. Yet its body is standing on four legs near six feet tall, and you imagine weighing maybe a bit over a ton kind of watch it loom through the bear, kind of turning its strange owl-like head, seemingly looking for whatever scavenging it can. Okay. You only see one, and it's not moving towards the party right now. Okay. He is going to continue moving on. Uh, he will definitely, now that he's aware of this one's position, he's going to keep an eye. He is going to continue to search for the location of the second one or the den, which whichever he finds first. Okay. Uh as 
you all continue looking through. Uh, I'm gonna have Grotus and Julius just make a... Now it'll be a survival check to see how quickly you gather it, essentially. Okay. Taking into account your previous nature checks for fight. 21! 21, very nice. Woo. Saber? Oh, sorry. Uh, one more time? Survival check. Uh, survival check. Survival? Okay. Um... There it is. Oh, shit, I forgot that. Actually, Bless you. Thing. Survival. Ooh, 20. Jeez, wow. 20. Survival boys today. All right, then. Yeah, no, you guys uh, knocked that out of the park. The DC was 40 between the two of you to see how quickly you could, uh, if you could gather it without any issue. What? Uh, well, so, hold on. That'll make a bit more sense in a little bit here. Um, as you are going through, rapidly collecting what you can, Pulling free uh, the blood root from many of the shattered corpses that now lay amongst the grass and greener. Um, the two of you are very adept at this. Uh, finding what you need, you take maybe 20, 30 minutes. You imagine you have about the 20 pounds you need. 40 was the DC to get it all in one go kind of thing. Oh, I gotcha. Uh, yeah, with the if for the 200 you were looking for, you are easily able to grab it, scouring around maybe 100 square feet. Um, you imagine you could go further. Um, though, as to how much is left in this acre, you're not sure. Um, push our luck. Push our luck. Choice. Well, uh, I mean, we we're also waiting to see what uh, our our, our yeah. scrapyard boys found. <laughs> uh, well, here in the junkyard. <laughs> Cassix. Looking through, this is an old battlefield. 30 years old, there are no leathers nor metals that have survived unbroken, so to say. Rust takes on heavy, rust takes it heavily, um, stripping away whatever value the metals may have had. Um, the leathers have been ravaged by time and torn by animals and other creatures. Um, <clears throat> Much of it is broken and ruined, and for all intents and purposes, you find, unfortunately, amongst this old battlefield, nothing usable, except Kessick. There's a glimmer of something. <laughs> There's a glimmer <laughs> of something amongst one of the bodies. As you move towards it, the flesh has long since vanished, the armor long since crumbled away. Very little is ascertainable about it, but you see lying, buried, and overgrown, only the hilt of it now being viewable. Uh, you see what looks to be the hilt of a blade unrusted and unruined. Ooh. I will, uh... With the body that it's when, I will say a little non-religious prayer. Uh, just sort of like... Yeah. Thanks for dying. Um, <laughs> Xavier looks over in the distance like, huh? <laughs> and, uh... I will... Fuck. Uh, all I have is some quills, so I'm gonna put some quills so I'm not stealing from him. Down. <laughs> <laughs> An equal trade, clearly. And then yes. I will, uh reach for it or grab it, whatever, or you yeah, have the hilt of it and draw it as I call uh, uh, Moonstone's attention. Be like, hey, look at this. Untouched yeah, by the weather. As you pull it free, there is a beautiful metal. Uh, the engravings upon it forming this um, near twisting vine across its handle and hilt. You find what is effectively a rapier. Okay. Un, un, unburdened by time. Beautifully kept. For the sake of this, will both of you make a intelligence check? Intelligence or arcana? It's going to be intelligence. There's nothing magical about it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. You're unsure. But the We're blade... the smart boys, yet we have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> the blade is beautiful, unwithered, sturdy, and strong. Well-balanced, well-made, 
and clearly the work of a very talented smith. Okay. Let's see if you take a crack at it. <laughs> Can I uh, see if there's any sort of magical properties to it? Uh, how are you doing so? I don't have the spell identify. I'm just trying to see if I can detect any sort of magic. Oh, wait, no. Duh. I cast detect magic. I can do that once a day now. Okay. <laughs> uh, casting detect magic. Uh, it is unfortunately non-magic. Is the material special in any way? Is it like... Is it like one of those with two a, very fancy materials, you with know? With a nine, you're not sure. All that's right. Nine, that's the you, you might, that just there. a suggestion, go find the orc who's a freaking smith. <laughs> or the high I DC, was getting the there next. <laughs> uh, all right. I uh, look at Kessix and I'm like, yeah, whatever it is, it's good quality. Yeah, you kind of look, the vines around the grip kind of twist and churn amongst what is a straight kind of T-guard, like T-guard. This is effectively like an S-stock style of weapon. Ooh. Okay, seeing yeah, how nice right. it actually is, I will leave some copper too. Okay. <laughs> I'll leave tin copper. What's it doing there? Oh. I know it's worth a little more than that, most likely, but, you know. Well, I mean, he's dead. It's not like he needs it anymore. Yeah, or she. A lot of traditions where the dead take with what they were buried with. So, who am I to say what his religion is? Oh, I guess that's fair. Uh, maybe we should ask Rodus. Maybe he's a smith. He might know more about this sort of thing, but... Uh... Yeah. It, whatever it is, it's nice. Good point. It's not magical, so there has to be something special about the smithing to keep the Time rust from like... taking it. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, absolutely, and good find though. Uh, let's see if the others need help pulling up that uh, blood route. Yeah. Yep. Uh, finding your way back to camp, they do not. <laughs> they, <laughs> they have gathered essentially as much as they need, gathering it into a large satchel. You have about twenty pounds of blood root, or hey. two hundred gold's worth. A good amount of work, guys, since you are not busy anymore. Grotus, why don't you take a look at this, and I will hand him the rapier. Uh, Grotus, make an intelligence check. Can do I do it too? I get advantage, <laughs> sure. or... Uh... I'm lowering the DC for you. Okay, I was going to ask <laughs> advantage, or I was going to say, do I use smithing tools with intelligence modifier was my other You know what, I'd allow that. Yeah, actually, no, I'd allow that. Roll intelligence with a proficiency. It's okay, so I'll be I... Oof. Oh, Ooh, no, that, <laughs> no, unfortunately, you don't. That's funny or bust. Oh, oh I don't. Not terrible. What? Xavier's the only one who gets it, weirdly enough. <laughs> I, uh. DC was 12, yeah, so. I, I like to think we're all just standing around not knowing anything about this, and then Xavier goes, oh, da da da, and we all just stare at him like, what um. the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you can make me a thing. The no, brain just trust some, got, just, the just brain some. trust just got like destroyed by the dumbest guy in the room. <laughs> As you kind of look to it, it looks to be a magnificent steel. Uh, Xavier, during your time in the very few ships that ever came through Kelligan, you remember tale of a famous captain that came through. You remember witnessing him, a dragonborn of gold immaculate scales, wielding a blade said to be forged by a uh, very talented dwarven smith made of a unique metal known as adamant. This bears a striking resemblance to that same metal. Wait a second, I remember this one. It's uh, a uh, Adam Adam um, Adam Adamantite. <laughs> and, uh... The rest of you have heard of it, you just didn't know what it looked like. Huh. I just I just look at him again with that same look as before. <laughs> just why do you know that? This is um, an adamantine rapier. Uh, essentially, uh, the weapon is of extreme craftsmanship, unaffected by the ages of time or of corroding or breaking. Um, you would know that an adamantine weapon, uh, whenever it strikes an object, it is considered a critical hit, as adamantine easily breaks through many other metals. Uh, you would also know its approximate worth is about... Usually a bit over 500 gold. Holy shit. I'm not saying this in character. This would be a really good thing to sweeten the pot with 
for yeah. fucking conscience. That's but your it's choice. It's also so neat nice. ass weapon. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> but I was, um, only, I was only gonna give you guys something on a nat twenty. So you got it. You got advantage. <laughs> hey, smart boys. <laughs> Dylan, Maybe. high five. Yeah, smart boys, totally. <laughs> it took the dumb guy to figure um, out what we had. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah. still looking at Bewilderment, by the way, at Xavier. Yeah, Xavier is just like, well, I mean, you know, there was always kind of talk about this one guy. Uh, I think like a uh, Norman sword maker uh, guy or person. Uh, well, Smith, right, yeah. And um, it always made this one type of metal and whatnot, and it always kind of sailed pretty well. I mean, I didn't really do too much as far as like the actual trade rounds and whatnot, but I had a couple of friends that had kind of dealt with that metal before. Um, hmm. Yeah, it's actually pretty solid, that's for sure. My top, my pa used to tell me about adamite tight. Never saw it myself, though. Adamantium or adamantite? Moonstone just pulls out a flask from one of his pouches and just takes a swig, puts it back in, and just like, one has to be wrong, just a pull in me. <laughs> I ain't drinking on the job. I'm not drinking anything. <laughs> well, in any case, with this, so we'll be able. This is worth a pretty penny. In the worst case scenario, if we're still trying to, we could always add it to the pot for trying to retrieve a, a friend or not. Yeah, that's would be the nice thing to do, or the the noble thing. Otherwise, he looks over at Kessex. You're probably the best one to use this. Ah, it's the um, well, it's the twin to the my saber, at the very least. It's the sister to my saber. Man, why would you ever want to sweeten the pot with that anyway? I mean, you can't quite get that metal every once in a while. That's a once in a life well, not once, a couple times in the lifetime opportunity, really. I guess that depends on what race you actually are in the first place. But, well, anyway. It, it depends more on the corn purse than anything else. Regardless, it is fucking expensive, and definitely something you want to keep. Hey, he hands it back to Kessex. You found it, you keep it, lad. Yeah. We'll, we'll see if... Thank you, though. Uh, Kessex will slide it into his little rope belt. Actually, wait, could I see that real quick? No. Nah. I take it you have uh, dual... <laughs> no, no dual, yeah. I, I take it you have dual wielding? I do not, no. Then you cannot use that weapon with uh, two hands, or with uh, I'm, two I'm, weapons. I'm aware. Yeah. But I can still carry it. You can't. Unless um, you want it. Do you want it? I mean, I technically can use it because you can use strength still with a rapier. Yep. Yeah. But, but uh, I can technically use it, but I'm not there, so. Yeah. I guess that's true. We forgot about our someone who could use a rapier. I, when see, I've been melee. thinking about that the whole time. I'm just. I'm just well, like, oh, this would be great for Gallo. Yeah, Instead well, of Gallo, I, might in use fact, it. have the opposite of dual wielding. I have dueling. Dueling, yeah. Oh, you have. Just, so. You just use one weapon, then you're fine. Yeah. Okay, I thought you... Yeah, you're not a dual wielder. But I, for some reason, I thought you used two weapons for some reason. Nope. Oh, so this is perfect for him, too. Yeah, this is perfect for you, then. Yeah, he does yours. use two weapons. He uses his saber and cowardice. <laughs> the greatest weapon of all. Wait, wait, I think you're talking about... That's definitely the wrong character, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> so, Xavier, upon taking is a blade... Uh, he just kind of holds it. It doesn't seem like really anything's happening until his hands start kind of going red. And for a moment, like what seemed to have, have been actually like a somewhat furrowing of his brow, it just slowly turns mellowed. Uh, that's better. And then he hands over the blade, and uh, there is definitely still steam kind of coming off of it a little bit. Well, in yeah, any case, we got over. <laughs> Grotus will hold up yeah. the sack. It's, we got all the blood root we need, so we can get going if we want to not risk anything. We've got the pretty good hole, I have to admit, between this and the blade. Yeah. yeah. Not an owl baron, so I... Trip it. Yeah, maybe next time. Alright, I'm just gonna just start pointing my, uh... My co I'm just gonna open my copper wire and just start pointing in the direction I think Gallo went and just be like... You know, do it a couple times until I find, eventually get a ping. And sure, be like, I'll say you're able to do so. Hey, we got what we need. Get back here. Are we finished already? What quick like that? <laughs> also, we got a bonus. Nice. 
Yes. Uh, are you much there? Are you much in the way of ranged weapon or up close combat there, Gallo? Is so Gallo not answering because he's not part of the whispering? <laughs> yeah, I'm doing this via uh, message. Oh, never mind. My bad. I missed that. That's You're right. good. Uh. And uh, just noting that Gallo is muttering, like, under his breath, because he's still trying to be stealthy. <laughs> well, well, yeah, that's, no, uh, that's how the spell works. Just, you you just exactly. whisper it, and then it basically pings in the guy's ear. Okay. Uh, well, just get back here so we can get out of here before we run into an owl bear. Right. Well, I found one scouting around. And, uh, yeah, I guess keeping notes as he had been watching that one owl bear, he will head to back. Sure thing. You do so without uh, alerting them, as yeah, they roll pretty trash on their perception. <laughs> Guys, I'm you a didn't little notice one of them though, which is so just would have been funny. <laughs> you guys are just you're both just kind of sneaking about, and then you do that thing where you like just back up into a death. Row, like ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello, good sir. Don't mind me. I'm just going to keep walking. Uh, yep, yeah, he heads back and um, sees. Is everyone with the? I, I, I'm assuming they put it into the bag of holding since this is twenty bounds of roots. Yeah, sure, we could do that. So you got your ginger. Out of curiosity, how does blood root taste? Well, it's a plant that primarily functions off of blood, so you can make the connection. Iron. It's rich <laughs> off of iron. I mean, it's a good source of iron. I imagine. Actually, back in the day, they used to use this to uh, treat, uh, oh, what's it called? Uh, it's common in women. Uh, uh, I am Reese. Anna. 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 Anemic. Anemic, that's it. Well, well, this one, that meant something else. Like, no, it's all right. <laughs> no, wait. What's the thing that? What is the? Th uh, this is me asking. What's that thing you have when it's you have low iron? Yeah, anemic. no, that's anemia. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anemia or you're anemic ah, or anemia. Yeah. Anemia. Okay, there you go. Yeah, they used to treat they used to treat anemia with this stuff. Yeah, fair enough. In any case, I suppose if we don't need anything else, we can get going. Unless you think you want to try to get more, but honestly, uh... it's not going to help the case we got. I mean, bowl's always good, but I feel like we're pushing our luck now. What do you mean? Everything's been going right and fine. We're pushing our luck now. That's <laughs> why. We've been pushing our luck. Everything went too smoothly. Let's go. Is the moment oh, you that's what that, that means. Oh. Yeah. You start to turn the tables and jason yourself. I saw one owl there walking about. Hey, and since we're not going to get any for killing him, there's no reason to engage in combat. I look over at Kessix. Moonstone just looks at Kessix, and he just has a like, glint of disappointment in his eyes. Kessix may share that glint. <laughs> but I'm going to keep my mouth shut because everybody else is right, and we don't need to actively look for owlbears to hunt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alright, let's get going. <laughs> I guess with all of our materials gathered and our bonus 500 fucking gold rapier. <laughs> yeah, things just go so smoothly for this party. It was, yeah, that was actually pretty good. Uh, I guess we head back because I can't see anything else we need to do. Because, like I said, <laughs> like the owl bear killing would just be for the sake of let's have a combat and murder and owl bears. They have nothing to do with us. <laughs> so, I, I somehow yeah, doubt they have know. a hoard of treasure waiting at the cave. <laughs> I, I I just look at I just as we're walking I just put my hand on Kess's shoulder and just be like, I really want to sleep on an owl pillow. <laughs> I really wanted to make you an owl bear pillow. But <laughs> <laughs> so just gives him a sort of like <sighs> you are my bro kind of look. Just you understand me. Yeah, I probably would have burned it, so it's probably best that I didn't begin anywhere near it. Yeah. I wasn't talking to you! What? 
Nothing. Uh, don't worry about it. I, I will it say, me as a player, <laughs> disappointed we didn't kill the owl bears. Grotus as a character was happy we didn't have to kill the owl bears. <laughs> Look, y'all got over thirty on your combined nature, was what you needed. You got over forty on your combined survival, which is what you needed. <laughs> Gee, we, wow, we just nailed those. They were pretty. Stats. They were pretty high checks. I didn't expect it. Like I was like, all right, I'll give it a chance. <laughs> we uh, we have we are too good that we have. Kill the enjoyment of what would have been an awesome encounter. Don't say that now. <laughs> we nat 20 for uh, the blade. I mean, like, we wow. can never be that good as long as Xavier is in your party. <laughs> Except that Xavier was the one that brought up both checks to exactly what we needed. I yeah. don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> We're, I Things are going so smoothly for this party, I'm worried that it won't anymore. Oh, don't worry, we'll probably all be killed when we try to go do the ransom. <laughs> How do things keep going so well for us? First the mana core, now this. I feel like the more we talk about it, the more we're jinxing it. <laughs> and this is why my character stays silent. <laughs> so with that, Chris, uh, Jesus kind of ended this quick so we head back with the blood room yeah. <laughs> you head back you find your way to the barber he the gold exchange is easy unless anyone wants to make it make it difficult i'll make it difficult. you son of a bitch <laughs> <laughs> so, we, 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 we agreed a prom price up front we're fine <laughs> yeah uh i didn't want to see. spare after the 200 gold well i did, oh, give, I did him give him 25 last time nice. Uh, so uh, we... Oh yeah, so, we... so you guys would have 25 gold extra, like you'd essentially just get back what you had. Oh, uh, okay. Alright, cool. So what's uh, total? Sorry for all of us. So we got 200 GP. Each? or No, uh, for fighting. the... Price, that would be the most lucrative business. Oh my god. <laughs> we, we got 33 gold each and 3 silver with a silver remaining. Gotcha. So, 33. Yeah, with three silver and a silver remaining for somebody. somebody I will take write it. That down. <laughs> I got it. Alright, uh... So, hey guys, I'm up to 163 gold. Nice. Uh, I got 183. Uh, I'll, I'll look at the guy and I will uh, say, hey, By the way, you wouldn't happen to have a uh, bone saw for sale, would you? <laughs> he kind of looks... That would depend. Uh... Soul is ready. Are you? <laughs> what? No, no Spider-Man fans. All right. I remember. <laughs> oh, I didn't I'm realize that. Was a... Sorry. <laughs> no, that was, that was Bondo Randy Savage's Bone Saw in the original yeah. Spider-Man movie. Oh, Bone Saw! Like I've got you for three minutes, like that guy. Yeah, that yeah, guy. Yeah, I got you for three minutes. Okay. <laughs> that was the chance of the crowd. And Bone Saw is ready. Are you? I didn't, okay. <laughs> Very interesting. Good to know. <laughs> I'm Glad sorry. To be aware. Sorry. Dylan, <laughs> Dylan, Dylan, don't apologize for that. That was good. Never uh, apologize for who you are. And this is why Chris needs a break. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I'll say sure. He's like, I might have like a spare. I could use a bit of work on it, but I could sell it to you. So, how much, uh, looking at the bone saw, what quality of it is it? It's pretty good. There's definitely some of the teeth of it have been worn down. But other than that, there aren't really like issues with it. All right. How much do you want for it? Kind of shrugs and goes, uh... I'll give you two silver. Yeah, he's kind of like, he gets a sense that it's like a bit cheaper than he would have like actually sold it before, but because of you guys just uh, getting all the blood root that like he can use for medical treatments, he's like, yeah, sure, whatever. Just kind of passes it off. Ah, it's sweet. I give him the two silver, I so say thank you. So, kinda just as a note, guys, with you. counting the blade we got, we got about 1,500 gold worth of stuff now. Woo! Yep. Uh, by the way, could I use the bone saw as a weapon? You could use it as an improvised weapon, yes. What I have noticed is that um, we have a new blade, or like, I knew that the others had started investigating as soon as I left. 
Oh, no. Oh, right. Uh, I'm sure we would have just told you on the way back. It's like, yeah, no, we got this cool rapier now. I mean, it's <laughs> also hanging off a Kessex belt. It's a pretty obvious when you look. It's like, you just got a new sword. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not hiding it, and I did mean to ask you about it if it was something you were interested in. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I, I didn't say anything before because they didn't bring it up, but uh, if they did, uh, with given that I am a Hyper user and my background, would I possibly know of any of this stuff? Of adamantine? Uh, the rapier in general, you know, the Lord it's Lord nothing. Lord it's nothing special. It just was a well-made rapier. Like it's not. Oh, okay. Um, all right. He'd look at it, admire the craftsmanship, I suppose, and uh, just uh, look at the group. So. We're not keeping it. Uh, we'll try to keep it, but it's kind of that, uh... It's kind of that extra little thing. It may be some honey in the pot. Yeah. Hmm. It's it's kind of our last resort if we want to... If they're not taking the, uh, gold. Nice. Well... He looks at Kessex. You're the one who found it. And... And I have quite a severe attachment to my current sword, and uh, I fight with a lot of slashing as opposed to poking. Um, it would not hurt my feelings at all if this was something you wanted. Consider it a gesture of friendship, and I will hold the blade out to you. He will take it. <laughs> There, there's a, there, there's a slight uh, raise in the brow at the word friendship, but he doesn't say anything about it. But uh, he nods. Well, hmm. it wouldn't hurt to have it. But I'm not, I'm not in close combat as often. But we'll see in the end, though. Funny to get rid of it. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, I forgot the Adam weapons have absolutely no special properties apart from it hurts some uh, some specific enemies. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, well, really it also deals double damage to. It also crits on any attack against uh, substance like objects. What does it? The crits. I have a question. Yes. That may make this very interesting for me. In the blade mastery feat, which is something Kessex may take at some point. You yep. can use your reaction to use your weapon as a defense. Yes. In that case, would that double damage against other objects work for that? To, like, like break I... someone else's weapon? Yeah. I'd say no. You're not the one applying the force there, so I'd say okay. no. Okay, then. It's a very cool weapon, but I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't need it. <laughs> Alright, um, what was it again? Sorry, one more time. Double damage on crits? Uh, no, it's double damage on uh, objects, so like barrels, doors, stuff okay. like that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Which, ironically, with a rapier, it's like, aha, I'm stabbing through the door. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I need to stab through a lock, uh, never know. Yeah. But yeah, I guess, uh, with that, Agalo will uh, attach the rapier to his own holster. Now he just has two of them. Yeah, sure. You got two rapiers? Yep, I got uh -huh. two. I have a regular one, and I have this fancy one. <laughs> You're kind of like the uh, Witcher, except instead of, like, broadswords, it's rapiers. One's for monsters, the other one's for humans. On the plus side, Somehow it is used for face of gold. Sorry, two people talk at once. What? Structures. <laughs> It's also useful against golems because golems are immune to damage. But if you got a adamantite weapon, it actually surpass it gets past that. Oh, <laughs> That's true. It's also just worth a lot of fucking money. Yes, exactly. It's five hundred gold <laughs> sitting in the bank. I mean, honestly, it's one of those weapons that I have absolutely no problem selling because there's just better to just get a magical it's, weapon in general. <laughs> it's yeah, it's very niche in what you can use it for. Yeah. Okay. No, like uh, sweetening the pot may be the most effect it has, which. Which is nice. I guess the next step is we're going to go meet with Conscience now, right? 
Yeah, I was wondering, are we doing that today or are we doing that the next day? Like, what was the... We had the to travel... move immediately. Like, yeah, yeah, we had to basically do it. The... We, we had to go immediately because we don't have the time. You got, got you. like, two days now before the deal's over kind of thing. Oh, it was okay. two days that we only had one. I guess, yeah, maybe because we our checks were so high, we got through it a lot faster sure, than whatever, we were expecting. But, yeah, two days. So, we got two days left. Also, the, the goal originally was for Julius to talk to Conscience, but uh, is Nikki going to be back next session? Or uh, no, okay, sorry, you weren't here for the discussions, Aku. We're taking a break from the game. All of us? Yeah, uh, Chris well, is me. breaking from the game. Oh, so. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, so... Yeah, it's... Chris said for about three weeks is what we're looking at. Mm-hmm. All right, sounds good. Just I'm suffering pretty heavy burnout. Um, yeah, you need rest. Yeah. Okay, Everyone okay. does. Then, it, then in that case, I guess we'll just go and do the thing. Yeah. Uh, so, um, we can just, like, unless any of you want to chime in, I can say what happens when it comes to... Uh, Conscience and Julius, unless any of you want to try to start a fight or something stupid. That's fine. I think that's fine. I think our only we're trying to buy him. If he doesn't take it, we'll offer up the rapier in addition, and then if not, yeah. it's an oopsie it's a no go scenario. Yeah, it's yeah. just a failure, and we take the money and run kind of thing. That's all we got left. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, kill them all, sickle. Don't forget. Uh, <laughs> yes, well, <laughs> kill them all is still an op on the table. I guess actually now that Nikki's not here, we have that option back yeah, open. I was uh, I was uh, Moonsun was actually gonna say uh, he wanted to go along with Julius. Mods are asleep. Start murdering. Okay. Was there a specific um, reason you wanted to do that? Uh, he wouldn't say, but he wants to be there just in. C- just so he can more or less say to Conscience, like, maybe get a chance to, like, pull him to the side or whisper it to him or something like that. Be like, listen, I haven't violated our agreement. They think, that for whatever reason, they have reasons to believe that Helmet is here on their own. I've said nothing. But they just want to buy him back. And we have the money to do so. Sure. The um, money to do so. <laughs> <laughs> the conversation, uh... As Julius talks with, uh, I'm gonna have just for the sake of it. I'm gonna have Conscious roll an insight and Julius also roll an insight. Okay, uh, Julius did get a natural twenty. Yes. So, as the conversation starts and begins to kind of shift as the two of them talk together, um. You slowly kind of start to hear him kind of reference again the previous deal, the 115, as Julius does try to, without accusing anything, um, speak about perhaps paying more for what they assume to be there. Um, Conscious does seem to be kind of confused for a moment. And then it's then that kind of Julia starts to pick up that, oh, that 115 was for Helmet. I told you guys! Who left as I said that? Uh, Judah. Yeah, uh, Judah. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding? It was only 115 gold? I told you that's what he was, was getting what, at, but you guys were that like, was no! What he offered. Listen, you guys were like, no, no, he's not gonna do that. <sighs> My bad for thinking the kidnapping mercenaries were trying to pull one over on us. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong, but um, kind of Julius like seems to pick it up a lot quicker than you'd assume him to with a natural 20. As kind of conscience does start to take it like, oh, okay. Like, well, I mean, if you want to pay us more, and then Julius with a natural 20 does kind of seize like, no, no, like what we discussed earlier is fine. Um, a payment is given. Uh, 115 gold. Look, now this kind of worries me. He's kind of like a loose lip mercenary. He'll just let anything go. Maybe we should pay him a little bit more to keep our names out of his mouth. What uh, names? The only person he knows is Julius. I mean, so that's 19 gold, one silver, and six copper from all of us. Sorry, there's a dog in the background. We've vastly overprepared. 
Yeah, you know no, what? I was kind of surprised. Now we have extra money. Not too bad. So if we I, I'm happy, happy with this arrangement. Uh, uh, as you kind of talk, he merely promises that in time, like that, as soon as he is able to, he will uh, gather more to search for him. Uh, true to his word, as always, he has been. <laughs> um, he, yeah, he. Uh, sorry, train of thought. Um, there, nothing immediately happens, and. As you kind of say, like, oh, you know, I haven't said anything, Moonstone, he's kind of just gives you this, like, I know. Just like an almost unnerving uh, nod, but doesn't seem to react heavily to it. Can I tell uh, if he's bullshitting me? <laughs> uh, roll an insight check. He already uh, made that insight. Six! <laughs> you are not sure. I don't like him. <laughs> uh, that's fair. Come on, like, hook, line, and sinker, dude. <laughs> Julius uh, would eventually return to you all, shouting that he believes this to be a great victory. You guys have done exactly as needed, despite the fact that he doesn't have helmet. Um, As you all would, yeah, leave and progress, unless there's anything you want to do. Uh, uh, well, while we're, well, while yeah, we're they, there. Well, he while says, we're oh, they're going to they're gonna find helmet. He, he assured me of that. Within the two days, he has to get back to town? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because if they're just going to, like, bring him back after, then this was that was a waste of 115 gold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, can you write down how much we had to subtract from All right, that? so it's 19 gold, 1 silver, and 6 copper. I, I just removed sure. 20 gold for simplicity's sake. We could tip him. <laughs> <Just, laughs> So, tw hold on, 20G, what? Just 20G, just silver? 20G, just just 20G yeah, is what right. I said, just, right. just make it simple on yourself. <laughs> or in fact, everybody can just, I pay 20G, everybody else can subtract 19, because that one extra gold will make up for everybody else's silver and copper. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Everybody else just take out 19 gold, gold. that makes your life what easy. When we don't want to, when we don't want to fuck with silver and copper. I yeah. like how every D &D game always devolves to gold being the only currency and silver and copper just falling out of obscurity, and no yeah, one ever touches Electrum. Yeah, well, that's usually how it goes. Yeah, because there's nothing besides, like, staying at inns and meals that cost silver and copper in the DMG guide. No, well, I mean, there's, like, houses. Yeah. <laughs> that's yes. not silver and copper, that's, that's gold Oh, no, and you're, right, you're 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 right. <laughs> I realized the mistake because I said it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's kind of dealing like with loose, like you know those people who only deal with bills and don't use change, right? It's kind of like that. <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> uh, so I guess, I guess we go back to. Are we going back to town to wait, or like? Yeah, well, I guess, yeah, we'll I guess so. We, we got nothing else we can do. I mean, we're we're rolling in cash right now. Uh, and then, if he lied, we go back and. Stab him. <laughs> <laughs> so, that seems to be Sickle's point of view as well. If we do go back to town, uh, is there a is there a smithy in town? There is. It's a very simple one, but there is. Would they sell scale mail? Scale. Throw me a d hundred. What do you need scale for? That Scale just ups mail. my AC just... by one. No, yeah. it doesn't. Yeah, it does. Yeah, Scale is the Scale? second best. Do you mean Splint? Maybe I'm thinking, maybe Splint, I thought it was Scale. Wait, are you though. talking... Scale Mail's the medium armor. Oh, yeah. Scale's medium. That's I'm what thinking I like, Yeah, yeah, Splint. Yeah, I meant Splint. Okay, Splint, no. Okay. That was the answer. <laughs> I was very confused. I'm just like, wait, what? Yeah, I meant no, They may have Scale from, like... Other travelers going through Splint is a bit kind of very clearly above what they carry, what they what they pay, kind of thing. Yeah, fair enough. I was just curious. Fair enough. Sweet. I I'm gonna look at Kessex and say, "Hey, you want to help me with that uh, with that Manticore gland again? I got two more of those suckers." Yep. All right. Uh, sure thing. Uh, I'm assuming I'm making the alchemy check with advantage, Dylan, or... Uh, Go ahead, my, my, my score is not... Alright. Alright. 
17. Uh, 17, unfortunately. I believe that's lower than the DC was needed again. <sighs> Damn. You have two more glam. Now, you, uh, since we go there for two days, would Grotus be able to hire out the smithy so he can work on that thing Moonstone wanted him to do? Uh, yeah, that's fine. I, uh... Damn, even... Does that at least lower the DC for next time, or no? Uh, we'll see. I will think about it, because it's not something we'll be dealing with for another month. So, okay. Grotus will go to the smithy, uh... I'm assuming I have to pay, like, a gold or something to use it. He doesn't... Since you're a trained smith, so long as they're providing your own materials and not using his tools, he doesn't care much if you use, your, use his anvil, so long as you don't break it. Okay, I figured I had to pay for the coal for the heat furnace and stuff, though. That's what I'm saying, your supplies. Yeah, well, like, I mean, I have I have smithing tools, but I don't think I got, like, a sack of coal on me. <laughs> no, no, but I'll equate that to... We have a mine, like, right down there. <laughs> Just go in and just, like, cherry pick it. Just off it's the walls. Mine. So, uh, what was the thing you needed to get Moonstone? Old. Exactly am I working on? Uh, like I, shield, I believe. Yeah, so I need you to basically build the panels of the shield um, and some of the smaller mechanism, uh, smaller parts so I can put okay, it all so together. So I'll, I'll, I'll start making the, uh, the plates first, because that's the simpler aspect. Do it with all right. smithing uh, tools. For the sake of it, yeah, make a smithies check. I believe in you. Um, Natural 20! Yeah. <laughs> over over a single day, um, you do manage to get one of them finished. You imagine the others will come easily. Um, as you would all continue, uh, yeah, you are easily able to do so for the day. Um, before the day would end, is there anything anyone else would like to do? I do not believe so. Not on Kessex, at least. If I still have time after experimenting, I'd like to try to figure out Kessex's damn fucking wrist launcher. Let's let's hold off for a bit, because I'm not sure okay. how I want to do stuff. Okay, um, that's fine. Who is Gala going to go I fuck? <laughs> Gala can fuck whatever it likes. I honestly don't have much left for the session. Oh, uh, figured. <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll buy a pair of gloves for Julius and say sorry for breaking your last ones. Sure thing. I'm the only thing that's important here. to me right now, Chris, is did Hellman come back on time? Uh, the very next day, despite all the, like, oddities, uh, Hellman does seemingly show up. He has no memory of anything that's happened in the past week. Uh, but he seems no worse for wear. Hey, you can- I go up to him just like, Hey, you got like a day before your mind is out of your hands. Let's go uh, take care of that real quick. Yeah, you guys are able to do so. And while it seems to be there is a there is a bit of a discussion he has to have, both with the uh, the town guard as well as, uh, as, well as with the Farstones, um, no one really seems to kind of believe his story of like, Yeah, I just- I don't know what happened. I just... <laughs> oh, who knows? So I can can be... I roll a general insight to see if anybody we cross paths with Hellman is sort of upset about this? Uh, sure. Roll a general insight. So I, I can be on my phone. Like, when we come back. Like, we're gonna do this all when we come back, is kind of it. I just... I didn't yeah. really know where to end. I was gonna end on... Of like Hellman returning, but it feels like really early to end. But I don't have anything else. No, that's fine, man. <laughs> we we gotta screw you over by making a perfect like owl bear run. I'm like, damn. <laughs> hey, maybe there's like a Fight Club somewhere that we can just go and test our skills against something. I don't know. So I'm assuming somehow we're this, not doubt this place is a gladiator for... pit. I I'm I'm thinking more uh, of drunken pit. Yeah, there might be a brawling ring. Uh, Moonstone will look for a brawling ring because it feels like it's a little early to end the session. I mean, <laughs> I, I, mean I, don't have, gonna... I don't have anything right now. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Good. Grotus wants to go looking for a fist fight. <laughs> uh, you eventually find, uh, while it is technically considered illegal by the king, like by the rule of Vildervale, uh, as Teleberg is an extension of Vildervale, 
uh, there does seem to be a kind of a back alley brawl uh, not far from the main tavern. Uh, you are able to learn that it seems to be some of the miners that were brought by Hellman that kind of haven't had work for the past couple days have become a bit famous in there. Um, uh, as I, I said, uh, maybe him, so... I, I, uh, uh, I'll give Grotus a flask and just say, Hey, if you're going in there, drink this. Uh, okay. What's this do? It makes you... It gives you a good bit of energy. It makes you feel unstoppable. Ah, it's, the you get, it's basically the thing you get D4s for. Oh, God. Uh, it gives me a D4. Oh, it gives me resi uh, resistance. and No, oh, it gives you a... Yeah, it's basically bless. You can basically add to every attack roll and saving throw. You yeah, it's a, it's, a it's a bless potion. Gotcha. Yeah. Sure. Is it like a betting ring for this for people to get in to get involved? <laughs> basically, yeah. Um, kind of as you uh, look for it. Hold on, I gotta pull up the names again. Uh, I put five gold on Grotus. <laughs> <laughs> um. It seems to be that the current kind of reigning champion since her short time here is uh, Hivret, if you remember. Is that the old dwarf lady I spent the first yes. night with? <laughs> yes. <laughs> God. Uh, hey, she's I'm become glad... famous. She's also extremely angry at Hellman because they've been here for five days and haven't had any work. Thus, they haven't had any income. <laughs> I, uh... um... I, look I mean, at I, could probably put say... together, I could probably put together her sheet pretty quickly if you wanted to try to fight Hivret. <laughs> sure, I'm... <laughs> Listen, I'm down for this. This sounds like fun. I I'm down okay. for a melee brawl for fun. Oh, we're losing um, players, Link. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, for the sake of it, you kind of watch as she... Yeah. Um, We'll just run this quick. Oh. You kind of watch as she gets into a lower stance. There's a clear, like, experience. <laughs> Um, and Tessel does seem to give kind of a worried, like, eh, I mean, if you want to fight her, Moonstone, go ahead. Oh, I'm not fighting her, I'm just, I'm encouraging oh, Grotus. Grotus. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, you got this, alright, you, you blow off some steam, buddy. Oh, uh, here, have, have some fruit juice, uh, just hand you the flask. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I guess we'll have a punch-up for fun sake, for funsies. Yep, I did have her prepared like a long time ago at least i knew what she was about um yeah <laughs> this is some combat we didn't get to fight owl bears but i get to fight an old dwarf lady in a fucking fighting pit <laughs> basically okay so for the sake of this uh i've got it set now so just roll initiative okay I'm she gets a 20 <laughs> i can't even beat that with an i, I get a natural with only can't even beat that for me, so... Of course I roll well, finally. Uh, oh, yeah, well, no, 20... no, it's not in abilities, yep. She would go first. Um, she, funny enough, is the only one of the five dwarves that has a level in anything, or are the four dwarves and one gnome that has a level of anything, and it's a level in fighter. Um, and she specifically pulls something from the class variance list. Oh, no. Yeah, when you do, when you go town to town, you actually get pretty proficient at one certain thing if you look for Oh, it. no, I think I know what, you're, what it Tavern is. Uh, roller? <laughs> no. Not exactly. Uh, does fighting a 19 style. hit you unarmored? Yep, she has the unarmed fighting fighting style. Yeah. She's a level one fighter with the unarmed fighting fighting Ooh. style. That's a D8, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a, a D4. D8. Oh. Nope, D8. Tavern D8? brawler is Unarmed is always D4. Brawler. Tavern no, brawler no, no. is. No, 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 D4. this is from an oh. Unearth Arcana. The, oh, uh, I don't know the Arcana. Unearth Arcana. Okay, D8, that's more powerful than a fucking high-level monk! <laughs> yeah, uh, you're on Stark's and deal bludgeoning damage equal to 1d6 plus your strength modifier. If you strike with uh, two D6, free hands, okay, the D6... Yeah. If you yeah. strike with two free hands, the D6 becomes a D8. Oh, Can I put a bet on her instead? <laughs> hey, roll that damage on me, D8. Uh, no. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm going. If uh, I, I do not, I might be unarmored, so I don't have my runes. Ooh, oh, I only take only four, four damage. What I do, though, I, I don't need runes to go big. <laughs> do you not? No, that is something I am capable of doing without my runes. And to be aware, you're in a fucking a minor pit, like a That's minor fair. fight pit. Um, <laughs> magic might not be like they don't notice the flask. That's if you drank that. Yeah, the big thing might be. 
Uh, fair enough. Grotus will do She's two also... unarmed strikes then. Go uh, for but it. I get to yeah, add she's my... a level one. I'm also capable of adding my strength modifier to both punches because I have two weapon fighting, so my unarmed strike is still counting. <laughs> sure. Okay. Xavier is being yeah. really loud on the sideline. Sure thing. So uh, I will just attack. roll. Oh, I'll roll my weapon attack just for the D6, but yeah, obviously they're just, the same these are five damage each hit. Obviously that'll uh, hit. That'll a hit. Twenty. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And another five. five. <laughs> All right. Uh, so actually, our damage second. outputs are about equal. <laughs> yeah, she rolled terribly. Uh, well, no, I mean her max burn. damage is a, a, eleven because if they're. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. Um, right. She will second wind. Ooh. Oof, doesn't ten. even feel it. Um. She is going to... Yeah, fuck it. No, actually, yeah, she's going to attempt to grapple you. Oh, okay. So, Roy Athletics or Acrobatics. Poof, terrible roll. Poof. Yeah, it seems your first hit's dazed her. She doesn't, unfortunately, manage to get a grapple on you. I'm going to say she'll burn her action surge and try again. Much better! Grotus, you got this. Oof, just missed it. It's kind of this, like, you break the first one, and she almost, like, lunges at you, closing the distance towards your neck and kind of grabbing... She kind of gets you in one of those, like, bars where your arm and, like, head are against each other. Um, as she starts pulling through, because of unarmed, uh, because of unarmed fighting fighting style, she does deal 1d4 bludgeoning damage to you. Damn. That is, like, a... For another one point of damage. <laughs> uh... <laughs> And you are considered grappled. What? Yeah, you are considered grappled. Great. Well, I will keep the grapple, and I will uh, just kind of like overhand crack, crack for my two punchies. Go for it. On the back. Punch, punch. Got those on the side, just drinking his drink. Uh, 18. Uh, 17. What are the pluses from? Uh, the bless potion. Oh, that's what the potion was. Okay, yeah. Both hit. So, bam, bam. Another 10. <laughs> 10 more damage. Uh, yeah. Definitely hurts her. She definitely feels it. Uh, she is going to try. Eh, she'll make her own attack against you. She deals additional. Why is Discord crashing for everyone? I don't know. <laughs> Must be an American. She deals. Yeah. She deals additional uh, damage to grapple targets with her unarmed strikes. So another D four. Well, that hits. Well, uh, it's another D four. Uh, plus the D six plus three. Oof. Um, though you're starting to, like, break her- Fuck off the ones! <laughs> um, so you're starting to break her grip, kind of. You can feel it, just like there's no air anymore entering your lungs. Um, and it's starting to get bad. But she's also starting to lose her grip. It's a very much, like... She's talented for, like, a regular person, but you're unfortunately a, a quality above a regular person. Yeah. Okay, I will, I will crack her again with another- Head go for it. Style. <laughs> 14. Uh, 14. If that, if you didn't have the, if the you didn't have the bonus, missed, yeah, you would have missed that one. But that hits for five. <laughs> Another 28. Hits for five. Crack. She is hanging on by a thread. Ooh, 20 hit points. Damn. She is 21. Yeah. Oh damn. <laughs> uh, she will. Fuck. Stop it, Discord. I can't see what I'm typing. Uh, she'll attempt another attack against you. Eight. No, it's very. She's starting uh, to go. And literally you feel like... just missed my AC though, because I'm a nine. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, but yeah, no, you can feel it. She's starting to lose it. Like yeah. there's, she's about to pass out. Hey, okay. the blows you've given her. What, what I will. Uh, I, I've got there's her on the rope. She's down to one HP. I've, I've taken out. She's had twenty. She has twenty-one hit points. I never doubted you for a moment. <laughs> Grotus will. <laughs> We'll just uh, go in for one last, like, uh, kidney punch. Sure thing. Go Crack. <laughs> you eventually, like, hit her, and it's like you feel the grip kind of finally release from your throat. You can breathe for just a moment, and you watch her fall. There's this... There's a, there's a wide range of cheers, you know, taking down the current champion. Um, clearly some folk aren't too happy, because there's a lot of dwarves, and you're at half-orc. Uh, but nevertheless... 
You managed to beat the level one fighter. <laughs> Well, she got me on level one with 21 hit points, damn. I give I have minor bonuses, right? Yeah, I was just saying, make it something. something extra, this yeah. was supposed. She was supposed to be someone that could, like, maybe challenge, a, like, you guys when you were third level kind of thing, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, fair. So give give, give um, us a fight for... <laughs> exactly, level... Mind you, with Grotus' fighting style, like, I might not be proficient, but because I get that bonus, that, that bonus action still with my full strength modifier, it makes my punches more deadly. <laughs> Well, uh, I think the feet, the feet's kind of what I was giving you the second punch on. Because your punches aren't technically considered light, but I was like, yeah, you got dual wielding, so might as well. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I don't have to do light for that. I mean, technically, aren't punches kind of light? I don't no, know. No, they're not. Technically, hmm. you can only make one punch attack a turn, but because you have dual wielding, I was like, yeah, sure, that makes enough sense that you'd be able to do two. Yeah, I mean, I got I, I got both hey, weapon yeah. style dual wield. Makes sense, yeah. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah, well, it was the feet that, yeah, but yeah, anyways. Yeah, yeah, the feet does yeah. it, yeah. You managed uh, to win. Uh, with that, yeah, we'll <laughs> call it there. Uh, anyway, I, uh, oh, man. I care about this. How much gold did I win? How much gold did you bet? Five. Five? five? We'll say it's an even split, so you get ten. Hey! Like you, you lost five, you got ten, kind of thing. Got it. Wait, I... Oh, no, I bet only on Grotus. No, no, no. Yeah. You, no, you I know, that's five. what I mean. You, like, you gave five, and then you got ten Oh, back. okay. No, okay, I gotcha, I gotcha. Yeah, in other words, it's a one to one bet. One to one, yeah. Alright, sweet. Now, where's uh, Injuna? Oh, uh, well, session already ended, but uh, it was just going to be the consisting of Xavier's loud ass fucking cheers, and amongst that, uh, just especially with the final win, just throws his hands in the air, does a few fucking pumps, uh, which may or may not sometimes ignite just a little bit. Sure, seems to freak some people out, but nobody, nobody thinks of you poorly for it. It's not as, as though Xavier would have noticed. <laughs> yeah. As as you're getting out of the pit, you just see Moonstone collecting his gold and just gives you a thumbs up. Yeah, with that, she's carted off, imagining to awake at some later time. We'll end there. Uh, Sweet. When we next resume, it'll be as Helmet returns, and we'll actually play that out. Nice. Okay.